If they're well maintained, they'll just break later. So of all the Mercedes that I've, I've had over the past uh, 10, 15 years, specifically AMGs, I've owned a lot of the W211 uh, AMG E63 or E55 wagons. Big fan of a wagon in general. Uh, I've owned the E500 and the E320 and uh, the E350. I think the W211 wagon is probably one of the best platforms out there. That's why you see a million of them on the road, cheap to maintain, etc. And to have one with you know, either a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated engine or a M113K 5.5 liter supercharged engine uh, is just too much fun, especially when you have a third row seat in the back for the dog or the kids. What's great about these cars is not only the performance that you get and the usability that you get out of a super powerful wagon that can use every day, but it's also the rarity. For the E63, between 2007 and 2009, they produced around 163 of them. I'll have to double check the number on that. The bulk of them being in 07, about 60 or so in 08, and I think 40 or so in 09. The E55 wagon variant was 05, 06. Most of them in 05, some of them in 06. And then they dropped that for the 7G transmission and the 6.2 liter NA engine for 7, 8, and 9. I don't know if they weren't getting a lot of orders for them or they were just producing them in small numbers because they didn't think that people would actually want to buy these things for real, you know, or just to be ironic and, you know, have something in insane. But for whatever reason, you've got approximately 160 of them for the North American market. A lot of large vol volume dealers, when they would take in on trade an E63 wagon or an E55 wagon, would not account for the rarity of having that rear hatch, having a T model chassis. So they would price them basically the same as they would a regular E63 or E55 sedan, which at the time was about 40% cheaper than the wagon variant, especially in the enthusiast market. So one of the things you could do if you were astute and paying attention is look for dealerships across the country that may have taken in a wagon on trade or be offering it for sale and recognize that Delta by what is a valuable enthusiast car and a very rare one uh, at a low dollar figure. So I had done that a few times and was able to you know, get an 05 E55 wagon uh, and then later seven, eight, and nine. So in 2019, had a silver 07 uh, that I was preparing to, uh, to sell, uh, but I was gonna hang on to it a little bit longer, I think, I was enjoying it. And an opportunity came up to buy a very rare example of an E63 AMG wagon because it was a rare color combination. It was green over tan. One of the things about me is that I have, I have five or six green cars in my collection. I'm big on green cars. So to have two things that I really love, a green car and an E63 wagon, too perfect to pass up, right? Well, there's a catch. It always is. Catch here is that it had 210,000 miles or so. An aging AMG can be a very expensive thing. If they're well maintained, they'll just break later, but at least you can get some fun out of them. Now, I happen to know the owner of this car. He'd owned it for a very, very long time. He's big in the Porsche community in the New York area uh, with the RSR project, and he's been taking that car to events for uh, years and taking very good care of it. I mean, he had a record book of $30,000 maybe in receipts and doing all of the, the complicated mechanical things, but that doesn't, you know, that does not a perfect aging AMG make. He knew that I was into the wagons and he was going to sell it. Uh, tried to put it onto one of the auction sites, but they had no interest in a car with that mileage. He offered me a very good price for it, but I didn't want to have that albatross around my neck. And I knew there might be someone out there, someone dumb enough to want to own uh, a car like that. And so I called Tyler and told him that I had the perfect car for him. He just had to fly out to New York and take a look at it. So he did, uh, came out, purchased the car from the owner, and then we met and had dinner. So, you know, I told him all about the car and let him know the details of, of what might be in store for him were he to buy a, a car like this. And he understood that it came with a lot of risks, but based on what he does in his, his channel, this could be something that's beneficial. So uh, he opted to fly out to New York and drive it from Manhattan back to Kansas. He flew in, picked up the car, we drove it around Manhattan, took some photos and 
Times Square and whatnot, and he, he really liked it. It's a beautiful car. It was well kept, but it was well aged as well. So after dinner, he took off into the night and headed back towards Kansas. All was well for the intervening, I don't know, 18 hours until he called me about 500 miles from home, uh, stranded because something had gone wrong. Uh, apparently there was uh, some electrical gremlins that were causing everything to go off at the same time and uh, prevented him from getting any further. So he, I think, had ditched it at some dealer uh, in the middle of nowhere, only to fight it in a well-documented series of videos on his channel that I'm sure you've all seen. But this is an example of what can happen when you buy an aging AMG that's out of warranty. Because if, if only you could get an aging AMG within warranty, you could have a really great car. The reason that I've owned so many of these, I think, is because I've been uh, looking for the right one. They're, they're such good cars. They're perfect daily driver cars. They're very usable. Um, they're relatively easy to maintain outside of things like rotors and the, the expensive parts on an AMG car, but it's not a super complicated twin-turbo V12, right? Uh, an M113K, especially the 5.5 liter supercharged, is a simple and reliable and bulletproof engine as long as you don't tune it. I was always looking for one in green. When one came up, I was obviously very excited and it's incredible that I turned it down, but with that many miles, you have to know better. Unless you just wanna sink money into it endlessly, which uh, Tyler did for a period of time, but that wasn't, that wasn't what I was looking for. Now there are, I think, two others out there in that, that color combination, so maybe they'll pop up, maybe they'll have less miles, and if they do, I'll try to jump. So I know he, uh, he hung on to it for a little while, put a lot of money into it, but eventually ended up trading it, I think. Uh, he traded it off to someone on a forum or on Facebook for a uh, Bentley Turbo RL. Now, I know that AMGs, especially aging age, AMGs can be problematic, but I think he learned his lesson with that. Uh, he's still, I believe, fighting that beast. And I think he would have sorted the AMG a lot more quickly. But uh, hey, that's why we watch his channel.